Well, so we're ready to do the newspapers and well dominated by stories that have also dominated the headlines and the discussion platforms and so and of course we'll do that uh, in the next few minutes as uh, Mamavi as well as um, also being joined virtually by Evans and Israel. Good morning to you guys. Good morning to you Mamavi. Hi, good, good morning. morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> yeah. Great great to see you guys. Yeah. Great to nice see you too. Seeing, nice seeing you too, uh, Mamavi. Yeah, it's hopefully you slept you well. No? I it, did. Yeah, I Israel did. looks good. He's wrong. <laughs> Roland. <laughs> yeah, he's wrong. Okay, ca can I ask you though? Because yesterday you said you were you were not stepping out. So the glasses up there, like, it's for the show. He looks like a Wall Street. You, you mean this this one? Uh -huh. Okay, so um, I can see very well when it's far, but uh, if I have to read fine print, oh. that's when I use the glasses. Okay, yeah. I okay. thought it was some kind of style, you know? Ah, no, 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 no. <laughs> you reminded, I, I thought so too. You reminded, you reminded me of Kojo, Kojo Yangson. So I was wondering whether it was one of the styles you were also adopting. Oh, he does that? No, not, I mean, that's <laughs> another line. fashion, you know. Uh, but <laughs> Charlie, so uh, your pick, which newspapers are you, are you doing, the two of you? Well, the newspapers essentially have the same stories. It's about the NCA yeah. trial, virtually. So yeah. it's running through virtually all of the stories. And then the vetting uh, of yeah. the Supreme Court judges. All right, so let's start. I think the OK, Evans, your sound is breaking. We can't quite hear yeah. you, so we've got to work on that. So let's start. Uh, with the okay. review and then you'll come through let, let, let me begin because I've got the daily graphic so let's just start with the daily graphic newspaper and on the front page of the paper four million dollars NCA scandal Bafu Boni TV Alaji Osman jailed court orders confiscation of assets the three gentlemen uh, pictures on the front page of the paper uh, also professor Mensa Bonsu Kolendi sailed through vetting it was absolutely impressive the two yesterday and i had to go back home and listen to professor herita mensa will so all over again for about two hours uh, vice president launches integrated ict system for maslock and then this one also hitting us yesterday domolo was found guilty of contempt but of course the judge did not impose a custodial sentence details of that story we will also bring to you in this uh, review in the center spread of the graphic Meda takes delivery of transformers for power projects. President inaugurates housing projects at Douala Barracks. Ghana Health Service identifies four regions as COVID-19 hotspots. That conversation is also on the show today. Details of that in terms of uh, these hotspots, what makes them uh, attracted or attracting COVID-19. Is it that they are attracting COVID-19 or people in some of these places are simply not taking the necessary precautions? On the back page of the graphic, Maritime Security seizes 10 canoes in illegal oil bunkering, and Chinese company presents 800,000 Ghana cities to COVID-19 fund. That's it for the daily graphic. Okay, uh, can we have one of you? Okay, let's start with Israel. Israel? Yeah. All right, so it's about the, um, the NCA trial and the fact that some people, the three people, have been convicted and giving jail terms. Yesterday, one um, of the... Israel, one can, of, can we have you do the newspaper, uh, if you have it there, so that uh, it helps? Um, okay. okay. Uh, I don't have okay. the newspaper. Okay. The, 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 I have is the, is the headline. Well, so, well, that's all right. That's okay, all right. so let's run through the headlines, and then we'll and then come back and deal with the matters proper. Oh, all uh, right. The Daily Statesman newspaper is the next paper I have. Maslow goes digital with the launch of integrated ICT system. Three Mahama appointees jailed 16 years for causing $4 million financial loss at NCA. We're grateful to you. President commends soldiers for role in COVID-19 fights. The backspace got some sports stories, but as usual, I'll leave it for Benedict. 
All right, Roland. Okay, so we have the Ghanaian Times. That's on the front page. Same story about the three uh, former appointees jailed six years, and it says um, NCA uh, four million dollar financial loss uh, scandal. That's the front page of the Ghanaian Times. Uh, should be on your screens. And then we have other stories related to COVID. The Auditor General also found guilty of contempt. Also mentioned yet, and the President commissions new Douala barracks at Bemakam. That's a good one. I used to say uh, close to the community uh, back in the day. Um, we have other story. Let's go to the dispatch. Says uh, the dispatch says MPP's general secretary John Buedu wants there will be mayhem in Ghana if 2020 elections are not held. Kufuado, Commission's Department for the Military, we have been delivering without sustainable funds. GBC boss to concern citizen. Mm. Now let's do the daily guide, then we'll come uh, and do the uh, discussions as it were. So we have um, the daily guide on the front page. It says Bafu Boni Tevye Osman jailed 16 years in NCA trial. Again, Domelevo occupies the front page of the daily guide. Uh, COVID cases saw I'll be fed to all nominee. Uh, and December elections will come on, a story attributed to uh, government. On the custodian front page, Kufuado praises military for exemplary COVID-19 fight in all great housing units, and basically the same story is occupying. All right. So Israel, let's begin. Right, so uh, back to the story on the NCA trial. I've heard some commentary yesterday uh, for, coming from Sami Jeff, who spoke with us on uh, news night and he he stated that the corruption the anti-corruption fight that we're talking about has to be in such a way that when we say we're dealing with corruption it should cut across and it shouldn't be because you're jailing a uh, political app, app, I mean, appointees or appointees of a previous administration but let's have let's have some examples for the present government as well and uh, I, I actually also believe that if we agree that if we actually we want to fight this, uh, take on this cor corruption battle, we must do it and do it comprehensively so that people believe that we're actually fighting corruption, but not that we want to jail appointees of a previous administration. And, and that's, that's uh, going to be uh, my take on it. But yes. We, and I, if, if I may add, I don't know if my can, can, can you guys hear me all right? Yes, we, we can. Go. We can. We can. Okay, so so the, the point is wrong makes I guess emphasizes the point about what I what I say is the politicization of corruption. Um, whichever way you, if the end if the government prosecutes them, the government, the previous government will say, well, have you pro we haven't prosecuted some of yours? That is a valid point. But on the merit of yesterday's case, you have to put in the context of, you know, again, the politics. Because when the Akufado came to power, there was this expectation because of who Akufado was and the way we knew him as a very astute lawyer, a no-nonsense lawyer who um, you cannot trifle with, that there was going to be a lot of um, corruption-related prosecutions when it came to former government appointees. That happened why? And within the MPP itself, people started getting frustrated with the system that you guys, we were in a position, we counted how corrupt they are, we come into government and we don't see any prosecutions. This was the first case, okay, this is the first case that has been successfully prosecuted uh, involving former government appointees, you know. And it in the context of that, that you see some Sami MP. You see, yesterday I also had um, um, the MPP communications director, people taking credit for it, if you're in government. The opposition party, obviously, uh, feeling that this isn't enough. And this is going to continue for a while. But if you put it in the context of an election year, this could be significant for the NPP. This is something that we look at and say, well, we told you we're going to be, we're going to be prosecuting, and this is the first in the case. But you can expect, I think, that the people who have been jailed yesterday will come back fighting, as I heard uh, Martin Quibb say mm. on Top Story yesterday, that you can expect that people, the those involved yesterday, will certainly come and go for a review and challenge the, the verdict of the court yesterday. I mean, but it's actually, it, you can't take the politics away, can you? 
No, you cannot. Yeah, you, you, can't, you can't take the politics away, Evans, I agree. But uh, let them do the politics. But let's also see, or let's have citizens convinced that we are actually fighting corruption and jailing people or prosecuting people who are found to be corrupt. And let's go through the legal uh, process. Just regardless like we have done. Of your political, regardless of your exactly. political affiliation. Mm. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Well, but, but we also do know that there's a certain precedence in the Fourth Republic and we also do know that post-2000 saw many of uh, these actions of prosecuting former government officials and uh, we, we have um, a number of them to also look forward to. Uh, Victor Salome uh, had to serve a jail term subsequently, even die, died uh, following that as well, uh, Yankee. And then we have Daniel Agbudakpi. Then post-2009, we saw uh, a foreign minister, we see uh, Oseyeje and many of them also going through the court process, uh, Stephen Asamabwati, and, and it's become a feature of the democratic dispensation. I don't know whether it's come to stay that we we'll only see prosecutions of perceived corrupt acts which are touted during the electioneering only when a party wins power. And I, and I believe that if that has got to change, it, we, the citizens, we need to hold the political leaders more accountable than we do. I want us to see, come like, to... That, that is why, that I, is I, why I, to... I was excited to know that we had appointed a special prosecutor in the person of Martin Amidu. Mm. I would have been so much more excited if I had seen Martin Amidu actually go to court with some of these uh, corruption-related cases. Mm. OK, I, I want to ask you on the back of that, would it make a difference? But I also wanted to draw your attention to the fact that these persons convicted yesterday uh, were not necessarily um, you know, politicians, you know, with that kind of definition because they, they didn't serve as ministers. These were persons who were working, one is a board chair. Uh, obviously, you can talk about the politics if you're looking at that. Uh, but one was a director general of the Communications Authority, the National Communications Authority. Uh, and then, of course, a one, a, a security person who acted as a security person. So not necessarily your typical uh, politicians in terms of a minister or a yeah. deputy minister in that kind of regard. But yeah. just the, the, the merits, the matter itself in terms of the context, can the politics because they're coming from the previous administration be taken away so that we deal with the matter itself? Does it give, give us any hope because we wasted four million dollars? Uh, in the end, even the equipment that we bought had to be taken away because we couldn't finish paying off and the Israeli company came for the equipment. So we spent that money, even though we accounted for a million of it, and we don't have anything to show. I, I think it's yes. the consistency of it, uh, and it's about you taking actions while serving in public office, which is inimical to the coffers of the state and also for public good. And if we can replicate that while in government, it helps. Because then we'll know that the, apart from us knowing at the end of the day when the case has traveled through the court and we've seen a certain finality, the actions have been taken by the government and the political party that has the government in power so that when related issues of precedents are mentioned you can refer people to that but, but also uh, Roland, i think for me the most important part of this verdict yesterday is not so much that the guys were jailed but that the attorney general has been instructed by the court to sell their assets mm -hmm. and, retrie and retrieve an equivalent of what three million mm -hmm. um, dollars um, worth of worth of uh, state funds from there. For me, that is the most significant part of the verdict yesterday, because really it means absolutely nothing to me if you pull them behind bars mm. and then you use the taxpayers' money to take care of them whilst they are serving their jail term for the four to, to five years that they got. And then the money is that now the court has brought finality to that in fact actually caused financial loss to me as a taxpayer. It's not retrieved. For me, it's, it, is, it is often totally useless when we have these judgments where it's only about imposing a prison term mm -hmm. that doesn't say anything about, okay, so what about the money that you say they cause financial loss 
to ask for. Mm. Now we see that the, the judge didn't say you just retrieve the money. From what we read, the judge actually says how the money should be retrieved. In other words, sell their assets, you know. And, and for me, that is the key. The next big question is, and this is coming from what we saw with um, uh, and uh, Alfred Agbeshiwoyobi, that it's not as straightforward mm -hmm. to say that sell their assets because we've seen this drag out quite protractedly with uh, <laughs> Woyobe, how to sell the asset, finding the assets. And I think that's where the conversation should move. Mm. We should now put pressure on the system, the Attorney General Department. They, shouldn't, they should rejoice for a second and spend the next whatever um, hours working how to do this speedily mm. and getting our monies back. Mm. Absolutely. Mm. All right. I, um, I think we spent a bit of time on the subjects. Uh, there, was, there was also the issue of Domalovo, uh, you know, who was found guilty, guilty of contempt. Uh, of course, he gave his defense as not seeing the suit early enough. Uh, but obviously, that was not a good excuse uh, for the judge sitting on the case, except that she didn't give a custodial uh, sentence, uh, you know, with the um, explanation that he is very important to the nation. I mean, what he does. You, you uh, couldn't do that to, that to him. That, that he's playing an important role. Exactly. And so, yeah, but it sends a very strong signal, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah it, it, mean, it does, it does it, send it, a strong it signal. It also goes to show, I mean, for him, you should let him, it tells him that, I mean, you can't just do things anyhow, and uh, you're supposed to comply. If the court asks you to show up, you have to appear. Yeah, yeah, and I think that the, re the reason why we tend to have a lot of um, related issues that pan out in the court is to serve as precedent so that the next time we have uh, somebody of a sort who occupies such an important office, uh, and of course because we know that it's supposed to be until you retire, etc., you cannot do actions that could also uh, go contrary to the same office that you occupy and also serve the public. And I'm, and I'm hoping this will be a case in point that will give him the confidence to do what is right, but at the same time um, steer him forward to rather enrich his office for posterity. Because, I mean, it, I mean it goes I mean, beyond just the stem, of course. I mean, th this case really, um, it's a simple case of, well, you were prosecuting me, in that, well, you brought a search charge against me, to be more specific, and then I file a counter suit, and then you don't re respond in time, <laughs> which, really did, which is what it is. Yes. And then um, Osako Marfo's people went to court and say, that is contempt. You're disrespecting the court because you're not... Um, because remember that my reputation is on the line here. I want to clear my image and quickly move mm -hmm. on, and mm -hmm. you, your, your, your lawyers aren't responding. That's what he was found to have been in contempt of court for. Yeah. Um, so it's, a, it's one of those things that said that's reputational damage somewhat to the auditor general. I mean, but they, don't, we shouldn't forget the substantive matter hasn't been touched. Yes, definitely. The substantive matter of the stair charge is still left untouched. And I guess for me, that's where my, my focus is going to be going forward. Mm. Uh, and, I, and I think that we have to end this way because if you call, and I call the judge, and um, she's, uh, he said, uh, the, she said, the, he, the charges, the charges and disallowances um, will, the charges and disallowances um, also means that he cannot choose which part of the rules he uses in carrying out his statutory duties to obey, and which ones he would like to ignore, disregard, and disrespect. So you have the powers as inherent in the Constitution, but you also need to make sure that you toe the line uh, and, and obey the law. All right, uh, let's do myjawline.com. I know this uh, story is going to appear on my jawline, so we can spend the rest of the time talking about it. Uh, the two uh, nominees who appeared uh, at the Verton Committee yesterday, uh, the nominees to the Supreme Court, and I, I think it's appropriate to say they wowed everybody. It wasn't like the previous day. A lot of people being impressed uh, by their submissions. So let's do myjawline.com real quick. If it's possible. So my jaw my jaw line but comes time with story that my, my story the first is by Martin Amidu. 
uh, that's the that's the front page story, and that is uh, from my interview yesterday with Mahama Yarga, who is the MP for uh, Boku Central. Uh, very very interesting about his relationship with a man who calls him son, and he calls father, and mm. they, they have a very interesting relationship because Tiamu took I guess father back in the day. In the upper, in the upper East region, to be very specific, in the same house, grew up together with their children, and so within the cultural context, he's indeed if a son to a father who is now persecuting him, and and he talks about him in in great, and I find that very very fascinating. There's also the story on the front page about full judgment on them, but now we're going to read a bit of the details. Oh, Papa also uncle, a good news story also there. Uh, recovers from COVID-19. You guys remember that he, he got struck down mm -hmm. by the virus, but he's recovered. He's recovered now. Uh, and we have Mamma's favorite judge, who is going to be confirmed very soon. Uh, uh, that's Marita um, Herita, uh, Professor Mensa Bonsu, saying government rejecting options of a personal report does not question our competence. Anybody remember that? Yes, definitely. And uh, he, she subsequently saying that now it behoves on Parliament as well as the other bodies like civil society and the rest to make sure that the push for the implementation of these recommendations quite uh, quite instructive, uh, even though uh, it's very mm -hmm. I, I would say I thought it was a bit controversial. The, well, but you know, it's well. You talk. Uh, there's also on the on the there's also I mean quickly. Okay, it looks like we lost the uh, Evans Evans again on, on that. Mm, okay, uh, so we have a couple of the stories just to finish up. My relationship with the Kufu Adam would affect my work as Supreme Court judge. And until well, having his own chambers uh, was with um, Kufu Adam, Prempe and Co. Mm. The key partner there. And then other stories. Uh, High Court finds Auditor General guilty of contempt. And subsequently, a story about uh, some youth in Choco believing that in Tampi wheat protects them against coronavirus. They are wrong. <laughs> and that's an, an opinion yeah. strictly following that story. That was Maxwell a, at a fact checker right there. Yeah. Absolutely wrong. But I also wanted to mention that there's a big decision uh, today. There's a ruling on Martin Amidu's. Uh, eligibility because of that age. Uh, so it looks like back-to-back okay. -back we might have some big decisions and that's one to look forward to today. In, mm. in, the, in the court. Okay, so I, I just want to, to take us uh, back to the newspaper because there's an interesting story there. It's in the center spread of the Daily Graphic, I believe, where media takes delivery of transformers for power projects. It just goes to show that um, we still have you know, the MCA funds being made available to support the electricity system. Even though we're not getting all of it, at least there's some work still ongoing. And then the, all electricity consumers should be excited. If we're having some new transformers coming into the system, it certainly it's going to make it uh, the distribution of power a lot better. Yeah, Israel, advocating with your meta reading and how um, we should calculate. Well, I, I got my 50% rebate. I'm expecting it for June as well. Yeah, yeah, I, I got it too. I don't know about Evans. <laughs> no, I, I, no, I haven't. I, I haven't too. I haven't. Ev Evans oh. pays for six months. So um, he's going to enjoy it after December. Just before we run off, though, there was also an update on Ghana's COVID-19 situation. But it yeah. looks like because of the vetting, uh, and then subsequently the judgment, these two cases, uh, nobody seemed to be talking about COVID-19. Meanwhile, the Ghana Health Service actually zeroed in on specific hotspots. Well, yeah, I mean, the COVID-19 issue, I mean, it's not going to go away. Today, we're going to devote a lot more attention to it, I'm sure. But uh, certainly, it's, it's worrying. But you also see people not being shocked anymore you know, because it's gotten to a point where we've seen the numbers keep, they keep spiking. And mm. people have come, I feel, people have come to a, a conclusion that, well, we're going to continue to see the numbers mm. spike. So at that point, if you throw 5,000 at me, I'm not that scared anymore. It, it doesn't really capture the headline as it would have some time, mm. some time back. But yes, I think we should focus a lot of the conversation on doing things to keep 
ourselves safe, okay. which is wearing the nose mask. Some people are deciding that um, I have the nose mask, but I'm going to put it in my pocket or in my bag until it becomes necessary. But no, you should wear the nose mask. I know it's uncomfortable, but yes, that's the only thing you can do as of now to keep yourself safe. All right. Because we don't have a vaccine. Absolutely. Okay, gentlemen, uh, we have to go. We've got sports coming up. Thank you very much for Thank joining you, us. Thank you, Ivan. Thank you, Israel. Yeah. Enjoy your day. You, you too. too. Go back to go back to sleep. <laughs> no, Israel, 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 Evans, they don't, they don't sleep. sleep. <laughs> they don't sleep. No newsman ever sleeps, sleep. I think. It becomes a habit. Very All habit right, true. Benedict comes yeah. up next. Uh, still conversations around the English Premier League. And the German League as well. Mm. Supposed to start this weekend. All right. All right. There's Formula One, but I don't think Benedict will go there. Stay with us. <laughs>